Hello everybody, my name is Lynn Smell and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about my 2024 container planting master plan. I want to do more container planting this year because I want to decorate my back and front porches. One way to add some life, some interest in that area are plants. It's also a great way for me to add more plants especially now that I'm running space out of the garden. And with more plants, that means more biodiversity, more flowers for the insects, more seeds for the birds, at least provide some biodiversity for a healthy ecosystem. I know that container planting isn't a new idea. There are plenty of plants you can buy from the nursery to use for containers. But what I want to explore this year is to find out plants or to experiment on plants that are supposed to be drought resistant. I want some drought resistant plants so I don't have to worry about the pots running dry. They can survive with a little bit of watering. Also, with drought tolerant plants, they make good options for water wise garden design. Right now we have the El Nino going, so we do get a lot of rain, but not too long ago, our situation was drought. So I want to be able to design my garden, the plants that I have in there, to survive when there's drought. As someone who is very much into cut flowers, I'd be very interested to discover plants that can produce good crops as cut flowers with minimal watering. So those are some of the reasons why I'm eager to experiment on container planting this year. Now my plan is to start plants from seeds. When I was searching Jolito, I was looking for drought tolerant plants. So I'm going to test if they do well in containers. I also have plants that are ready to be divided from my landscape. So I'm going to be grabbing those and putting them in my containers. In terms of perennials, I pick perennials that are hardy to zone 4. I'm technically in zone 6, so if I want them to survive the winter, they'll have to be two zones hardier than where I currently am. If they're not hardy to zone 4, they would have to be flowering on their first year so I can treat them as annuals. Aside from for perennials, there's a few annuals that are drought tolerant too that I would like to experiment as well. For both perennials and annuals, I have to make sure that they do not have deep tap roots. Some drought tolerant plants can tolerate drought because they have deep tap roots. But if you plant them in containers, they're not going to be happy. So uh, I try to do my research and choose plants that have no deep tap roots. First is yarrow, scientific name Achillea. And under yarrow, I have two varieties that I would like to plant for containers. The first one is Love Parade. It's got long stems with pink daisy like clusters. Just imagine. A fever view, but pink. Next is Parker's variety. It has grows up to four feet tall and it's got tight yellow umbels. Both are up to zone four and they're great for drying as well. As with a lot of yarrows, they are very easily started as seeds, so don't hesitate trying to plant yarrows because they're quite easy. Next is Nepeta. With Nepeta, I have two varieties or two types. First one is racemosa, which I already have in my garden. So I'm just going to have to dig those up and divide them and put some of them in containers. They've got really nice gray foliage and bees love them as well. The next kind of napata is napata subsessilis. And the variety I got is Grandview, which I got from Baker's Creek. It's got bigger pointed more leaves compared to the racemosa and the flowers are much bigger as well so i'm hoping that not just bees will like them but hummingbirds as well stachys byzantina common name lamb's ear it grows to zone four and it's got gray foliage soft texture pretty much like lamb's ear that's why they got this name people usually use it in the landscape for their foliage but they have flowers that can be harvested as cut flowers I do wonder if they will be okay uh, later on the season because I've heard that they can look raggedy. So as once 
the once it starts blooming, I will have to cut them down and see how they go. One thing I like about them is that they can tolerate part shade. So I can put some of the seeds that I started in part shade and see how they do. And you don't really need a lot of fertilizer for them because they do prefer poor soil. Now to Artemisia. I have two types. Artemisia lactiflora, which is a Artemisia that has creamy white scented panicles, almost like an airy element to it. Reminds me of um, a still bee, just taller. Grows 180 centimeters tall and can tolerate up to zone three. The only thing I'm concerned about is it's typically not, it's not supposed to be drought tolerant. It can tolerate average soil. So I'll figure out what kind of amendment I should be adding later on and see if they can if they can tolerate being in a container without much water. Next type of Artemisia is Artemisia ludoviciana. It's also called white sage and it has been used by natives, Native Americans for smudging. So if I feel like I'm getting some bad vibes in my environment, I can just grab a few, dry them and use them for smudging. It grows up to 60 centimeters tall like dry soil and i think they could be good for cut flowers as foliage they do tend to spread so i think they'll be perfect for containers now cosmos is an annual and usually cosmos for cut flowers they grow up to four feet tall i did plant a couple of varieties that i only found out to be to grow up to two feet tall so they're not that great for cut flowers but I would imagine they'd be really good for containers. The first one is Santos, which is a very different type of cosmos because it's yellow. I did enjoy having it in the garden when I got it, when I planted it two years ago. The next one is Exenia. This one has very interesting coloring. It's purple, but it's got um, it's a purplish kind of duotone in the sun when it's when it's under the sun. It's kind of hard to describe, but I did enjoy having it too in the garden. It's just that it didn't have long stemless to be used as cut flowers. Having Cosmos in my container garden adds a ferny foliage when they're not in bloom. So even if it's not in bloom, I will still have some, it will still provide some interest when it comes to the overall garden composition. Most salvias are drought tolerant. And the salvia I chose for container gardening this year is uh, is a Texas sage hummingbird series. Um, the variety is called Forest Fire. It has black stems with red flowers, so the hummingbirds will definitely will definitely love this plant because hummingbirds are attracted to red. Penicetum thunbergii is a is a fountain grass. It's not hardy to zone six, but apparently it's a first flowering plant. The common name is red bunny tails. So I can imagine this plant, once it starts forming its seeds to look really pretty against the blue backdrop in, in my porch. I would imagine they would also make great element for cut flower arrangements. Next is a form of clover. It's called Trifolium rubens. And the variety variety's name is Frosty Feathers. It grows up to it grows to zone four, up to sixty centimeters in height. It reminds me of a lupin, just smaller. It's supposed to make a great cut flower, so I'm gonna experiment on that. And one thing I like about this plant is that it t likes poor soil. It has to be poor soil since it can produce its own nitrogen. They they really don't need to be fertilized. It can also tolerate part shade, so I'm going to try to plant a few in the landscape in my part shaded area. Melinus nervigumis, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's called savanna grass. So similar to Penicetum thunbergii, it's got that interesting airy feathery texture in late summer. So together with the Penicetum thunbergii, I think they will look great together is also going to add some uh, feathery element in any bouquet. And last is Teucrium orientalis. It's um, called 
The common name is Oriental German, German there. It's supposed to be first year flowering perennial. Um, so I chose it even though it might not survive containers in, in my zone. Maybe it'll be okay if I plant them in the ground, but if just for containers, they, they probably won't survive a winter. I can't really tell how, what they really look like in real life because the pictures don't really give me a clear idea. I just like that it's blue and it's airy and it's panicle. So we'll see how they are. So there you go. Those are the plants that I am including in my 2024 container planting. Thank you so much for watching the whole video if you've reached it this far. I try to show up here every Thursday. So until I see you again, bye.